Well, here we are friends with another demo memo. And today I'd uh, like to talk to you about discipleship. I'm sure all of you would agree that words are important, but how much more so is a person's last words? And particularly if that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Before Jesus uh, left to go to heaven to be at the right hand of the Father, he gave his disciples some instructions. In uh, the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus told his disciples to go into all the earth and preach the gospel to every creature. And in uh, Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, Jesus told his disciples that all authority had been given to him in heaven and in earth, and that they were to go and make disciples of every nation, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them everything that he had commanded while he'd been with them. And then he said he would be with them until the end of the age. That word teaching them is discipling them. And those were Jesus' final words to his disciples and to all those disciples and believers that will come after them, i.e., in other words, the church. Us today, all followers of Jesus are or should be disciples. But these were Jesus' final words, the last instruction he gave, if you like, his church was to go and preach the gospel to every creature and to uh, disciple all the nations. So that's, that's everybody. And these were probably the most important words that Jesus spoke because they were his final words, his final instruction to us. And as I look around the church, um, I see less and less evidence of any appetite for discipleship. In fact, there were some statistics, United Nations statistics done, and that in, in a rough terms said that in 1970, approximately one third, 33% of the world's population were claiming to be Christian. But fast forward 50 years later to uh, 2020, which is uh, just a couple of years ago, or a year, a year or so ago, the number of people professing to be Christian was exactly the same. I think it had increased possibly 0.1 of 1%. So in other words, in 50 years, the church worldwide had stood still. So when you look at Jesus' final words and his command, his instructions to the church, and then you look at those statistics, it would seem that the church is not doing such a great job. Now I know that individual churches and organizations are doing a phenomenal job, but generally, broadly speaking, the statistics would seem to show that we've stood still in 50 years. At the same time, uh, religions like Islam have actually increased 8% over that same period. That's 8% of the world's population. That's a lot of people. And that astonishes me when you consider what the faith of Islam offers versus Christianity. Everything from the founder of the faith to the tenets, the values, the beliefs of the faith. And so you've got to ask the question, why? So I just want to make in these next few minutes the case for discipleship. I want to go back to the book of Genesis, right back to the creation story in chapter one, because I believe God established a principle in the physical realm which also applies to us in the spiritual realm. You see, God is a spirit and we can only know him in the spirit. Uh, John 4 verse 24, I believe, says, 
God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So anyway, let's just go back to the beginning and to Genesis and the creation story. And as God is starting to speak things into being, uh, I want to look at uh, Genesis verse uh, chapter 1 and verse 11. And this is the old King James Version. And I, I use this deliberately because some of the modern uh, translations actually miss uh, this important truth that I want to share with you. And verse 11 of Genesis 1, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Now don't miss this because this is so important. So God created the grass and the herbs and the fruit trees with the seed in it to reproduce itself. This is vitally important. This is talking about seed and by default multiplication. So God's intention was for things to be fruitful, to multiply. In fact, he goes on to create the birds and he goes on to create the sea creatures. And if we just move on to Genesis 1 verse 22, he's talking about the sea creatures. It said, and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl, the birds, multiply in the earth. There again it is, that word multiplication, and this is God's desire. Let's move on now to Genesis uh, 1 verse 26, where the pinnacle of God's creation is the creation of mankind in God's image. Let's just look at this verse, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness our likeness that's plural so right at the beginning we can see that god is not just god the father there is also god the son and god the holy spirit and he's saying let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air over the cattle over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So God has created man, male and female in his image or in their image. But here again, here's the key. And God blessed them, verse 28, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over everything, over the earth, basically. The point I want to make is that in the physical realm, God's desire was reproduction, the seed in it to reproduce itself, to be fruitful and multiply. It was all about seed. It was all about multiplication. Well, I want to submit to you that the same law applies in the spiritual. In the book of Mark and chapter 4, Jesus talks about the parable of the sower. And um, this is such an important parable, and Jesus was pointing this out to his, um, to his disciples. And in uh, Mark 4, Jesus is explaining what the parable of the sower is all about. The sower went and sowed some seed and it talks about some fell on stony ground and some fell among the weeds and some fell among good soil and produced different levels, again, multiplied different levels of fruit. It's all about fruit and it's about the seed being sown. But as Jesus is explaining this parable, to his disciples in verse 14 of Mark 4, he said, the sower soweth the word. In other words, we're not talking about physical seed here. We're talking about God's word, Jesus' teachings. What did we just say earlier? His last instructions to his disciples, to us, before he left the earth and went to be with the Father, was that we go 
and make disciples of every nation. In other words, we reproduce ourselves and we sow God's word, Jesus' commandments. He said, teach them everything um, that I've taught you while I was with you. In other words, Jesus himself advocated discipleship. Here he is telling them to go and make disciples, but not only did he advocate, did he command that we do this, he also demonstrated it. As the gospels show that the time he spent with his disciples doing life with them, but daily teaching them, teaching them uh, the kingdom truths and values that he wants us to adhere to, to follow. And so he makes it very clear, Jesus' own words, the sower soweth the word, his words, his teachings, God's truth. And he wants us to make disciples of every nation. Why is this important? Well, A, because Jesus, first of all, demonstrated it. But secondly, because Jesus' last words to us, instructions, commanded us to do this. Thirdly, because Jesus talks in um, uh, Matthew 24, um, that he talks about the end time scenario and all the things that are going to happen leading up to the end of all things and Jesus' own return to the earth. And he paints a very um, grim picture in Matthew 24. And I'm just uh, finding that passage for you. And he talks about all the things that are going to happen. He says, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. Anybody heard of any wars and rumors of wars lately? The whole world at this point is in chaos with nation rising against nation. And that's the next thing that he says. He said, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. He says, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet in verse uh, six of chapter 24. Then he says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, that's diseases and earthquakes in all kinds of strange places. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Then he talks about us, his followers, being delivered up and hated and afflicted on account of Jesus because of his name's sake. And talk, talking about people being offended by Christians and betraying one another and hating one another. And then the rise of false prophets. And he talks about whoever endures unto the end shall be saved. But here's the key verse. He says, and this gospel of the kingdom, these words must be preached in all the world as a witness against or as a witness unto all the nations and then shall the end come. So point three, uh, why, why is this important? Is because Jesus is not returning until we've done this. So in other words, his last instructions to us to go and make disciples is really not optional. This is why discipleship and preaching the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom to every creature everywhere is so important. Jesus is not returning until the church, us, his disciples, his believers, his followers, have done what he asked us to do. And yet the statistics show that this is not happening, that in 50 years, the church of Christ has stood still. And just in case anybody's doubting me, so we've got this principle in the physical of seed, of reproduction, of multiplication. We've got the same situation. Jesus has commanded us to go and make disciples and preach the gospel, sow the word, the seed of his word into people's hearts, into the fertile soil of men's hearts as a necessity. 
But I just want to share some verses with you uh, also in John's Gospel. And uh, particularly chapter 15 where Jesus talks about um, I am the vine and you are the branches and outside of me you can't do anything. And he talks the whole chapter about bearing fruit and that outside of Jesus we cannot bear fruit. So, but listen to what this says, uh, John 15 verse 8. He says, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. In other words, the mark of a true disciple is to bear fruit. What does that mean? It's to make other disciples. That is our main purpose, Jesus' final words to us. He modeled it for us with his own disciples while he was here on earth. And this is what he's commanded us to do. And he's saying that God is glorified when we bear much fruit. And outside of him, we can't bear any fruit at all. And uh, just another verse, which I think just puts the icing on the cake and uh, locks this down completely. And it's uh, just eight verses on. Jesus said this to his disciples, and these were some of the last words to his disciples. This was the week leading up to his crucifixion in Jerusalem. He said in verse 16 of John 15, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And, just check this out, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and not just any fruit, and that your fruit should remain. In other words, the seed in it to reproduce itself. We need, brothers and sisters, to make disciples who are capable of reproducing themselves. In other words, we're not making converts, Yes, we have to get people saved. We need to preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16, 15. That's the first step. So evangelism is vitally important. The second step is to make them into disciples, to develop, for them to develop a relationship uh, with Jesus, with God, by studying his word, through prayer, through fellowship, through worship. You know, it's interesting uh, the most famous verse or scripture, I think, in the Bible, everybody knows John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. Some people think that, um, you know, Jesus came and died to forgive us our sins, and that's it. And it's pie in the sky when we die. We don't really get any benefit until we go to heaven. No, that's not true. In John 17, verse 3, Jesus said, And this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In other words, eternal life is a relationship. It's about knowing God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So eternal life is that life, that relationship with God and with Jesus that starts the day a believer receives Jesus into their heart, accepts him as Lord and Savior. So it's so vital that we make disciples because Jesus modeled it. These were his final words, his command. It's not optional. And because this is what brings glory to God, that we bear much fruit and show ourselves to be his disciples. And finally, that we didn't choose him. He chose us and appointed and anointed us to go and bring forth fruit and fruit that remains, fruit with the capability, because it's got the seed in it to reproduce itself, the word in it to reproduce itself and make disciples, but not just disciples, disciple makers, people, believers, capable of reproducing themselves by sharing and discipling others. Here, 
at demo missions, we are providing resources to do that. Check out our website, www.demomissions.com or any of our social media, just type in at demo missions and you'll see our discipleship evangelism program. This is designed for people, either as an individual, small groups, churches, conferences, to go through the material. It's uh, 16, level one is 16 lessons with all the text, all the scriptures, questions and answers to cement the teaching and the truths that are being shared, but to allow discussion so that it gets into people's hearts. The word gets into the fertile soil of men's and women's hearts. And at the end of uh, that program, people can then take that material once they've been through it and go and do likewise. In other words, reproduce themselves, bring forth much fruit because Jesus as appointed and anointed, he chose us, we didn't choose him. So that's what we do. We also have a complete 10 lesson evangelism course all of these resources, guys, are free. Free to download, free to use, free to use uh, on your own or with other people. But the whole purpose is to fulfill what Jesus commanded us to do before he left planet Earth and went to be with the Father, which was to go and bear much fruit, thereby glorifying God and also showing that we are his disciples. May God bless you.